Hi, it's Leslie, married at first sight, and the honeymoon is over in more ways than one. So, Pastor Cal has finally showed up, and in my estimation, he's a few days too late, possibly a week, because even Pastor Cal can't talk these couples off the edge. They are firmly in the crapper, most of them. But to be as optimistic as possible, I am going to start with the best couple, the one who's got the best shot of it, and that would be Chris and Nicole. And as they both have said, it has been smooth sailing until Chris drops this little bomb on Nicole. We've had an amazing start and we're heading in the right direction, but I don't want to be rushed into making a decision of like where to live after decision day. If we have forever together, like what's the rush to move in right away? We just have sleepovers and stuff, so. What? You're doing the best. Oh my God, now you want to live apart? Wait a second. You guys were the best. You're supposed to just go off into marital bliss. Now you want to go backwards and he, want to, he wants to keep his own apartment and just see her occasionally and date? Oh my God. So that's just a big red flag that something something is off here. And Nicole seems to be the one that um, is getting walked all over because she's not standing up for herself saying, this is ridiculous. She's just letting it happen because she doesn't want to rock the boat. Anyway, they met with Pastor Cal, and oddly, he didn't make that big a deal about this, which I was shocked about. Um, but then Pastor Cal got the highlight of his of his interviews. Your your foundation here is pretty strong. Yeah. Has that led to intimacy in your marriage? We have been yeah. intimate yeah. As this week. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. 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 Yeah. So they've been intimate. Pastor Cal, that is music to his ears. He couldn't have been happier. Bottom line is, it's smooth sailing. Just Chris wants to live apart, Nicole's going to go along with it, and the kicker of it all is they just slept together. How would you feel if the person just slept with you and then he hits you with, you know what, I think it'd be better if we just live apart. I don't know. I wouldn't be too happy if I were Cole right about now. But And just to prepare you, that was the highlight. It's all downhill from here. We're going to go on to Dom and Mac, and it is just painful watching them. Painful. Dom's completely turned off. She has just lost whatever attraction I think there was to Mac. I mean, he's a, he doesn't want to do things. He lives in a basement. She wants none of it. And it's so, it's a, it's such a big turnoff for her. She even insulted his dogs and how he feels about his dogs. That's like, the dogs are the wild card. It seems like in every relationship on Married at First Sight, they really need to take into account the dogs and their relationship with the dogs. Anyway, Mac kind of just summed up how he's feeling. I feel like I've been spying really since the honeymoon. And I feel like every day there's something else about me that you don't like. And I've made compromises over and over. I, I just feel like there's no compromise on your end and it's just been over and over of things I'm doing wrong. Ouch. I know, it's not going well for them and Dom wants to just keep it, keep it status quo and, and, and plug along as they are, because as she says, like, the energy right now, I feel like is manageable. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not feeling like, oh, I hate his guts. So she says she doesn't hate his guts right now. That's a really friggin' low bar. Oof. Bottom line, no surprise, Dom isn't moving in. Oh well. Now on to Gene and Clint. They used to be by far the worst couple, but we have some competition for that worst couple spot now. It seems like they, at least on the surface, they've they've survived the slender, non-athletic gate of the insults that came from Clint. They've they've gotten over that. A little hug when she came over through the door. I was quite surprised, because ew. Bottom line, Gina's not comfortable moving in with Clint. I mean, I wouldn't be either. Ew. She says there's nothing romantic. What a shock. Anyway, Pastor Cal came over to try to revive another failing couple and um, he had his work cut out for them with these two because they are just not in a good place. You can tell immediately right when the couple sits down on the couch if they're three feet apart, which many of them were, you know, it's trouble in paradise. Anyway, Gina will not move in. She's not comfortable. He tried to nudge carefully. Pastor Cal can't push too hard on that without looking a little... You know what I mean? Pushing a girl to live with a guy she's not comfortable with, that wouldn't go over well. So Pastor Cal had to kind of tread carefully. Anyway, when it all ended up, they said they're going to keep trying just because they signed up for this shit. I think Clint really likes her. He just hates to admit it. But she's not into him. It's just, it'll be a slow death for them. But they're going down. Now onto Aris and Jasmine. This is just a sad state because Jasmine's beautiful. I mean, she's a beauty queen. She has to be beautiful. Aris is cute. He's not attracted to her. She's really attracted to him. He's not sexually attracted to her. That's a problem. They met with Pastor Cal. Again, struggling here. 
Pastor Cal tried his best, you know, to relate to Aris and get him to want to rip her clothes off, but Aris just isn't feeling it. On the honeymoon, I was kind of like stressing because my wife is like very, very like attracted to me and into me. And I'm not on that same level yet. Like it's not equal. What do you do with that? I don't know. He tried to sell it as best he could. You know, it, it was it was a sad state, but that was it for them. They're just plugging along with one person attracted and the other not. Now, our last couple, Shaq and Kristen. I still think he's so cute. I like him. You know, Pastor Cal, they meet with Pastor Cal and Pastor Cal assures him, be corny. If that's you, do you, you know? But then Pastor Cal asks this question. So I want to know, is there any chemistry there? Not really. Yeah. Kind of just sums it up right there. There's nothing. Even though they almost look like they have a little chemistry, they look chummy. I mean, more so than some of the other couples who look like they hate. Um, so they look chummy, but uh, she says, no, there's nothing happening here. So Pastor Cal did his best to try to turn this one around. And he, kind of, he tried to convince them that if they could work out and find whatever magic between them, they could be a power couple. So is that appealing? Is that enough to try to push through and give this a, give this a go? I don't know if that's enough. Sorry, Pastor Cal, you need something more than being a power couple. This may be the worst season ever as far as success rate. I'm thinking there's only one, one chance and that one might go down too. So this might, this might go down as the worst season of Married at First Sight. And you know, what are you going to do? Anyway, that's my recap. If you like my recap, please subscribe and help me out here and hit like on the video if you liked it and I will see you next week. Bye.